Hi, I'm Glenn Rabenberg with SoilWorks, and today we're going to take just a few minutes to talk about a soil health assessment. You know, hopefully most of us go to the doctor from time to time and get a physical, get a checkup. They may put us on a treadmill and do a stress test. They may check our heart, listen to our lungs, see if everything's ticking and clicking the way it's supposed to. Well, guess what? Your soil is very similar. Your soil needs to breathe. And you can do a stress test on your soil. A common tool that we use is a penetrometer. This measures PSI of good, healthy soil. Good, healthy soil should contain 25% air, and this air needs to be homogenized or deposited in each and every cubic inch of the soil. So if you're curious, Talk one of your neighbors into buying a penetrometer, and then you will show him how to use it. Very simple, handheld, go out in your field, push down. Stop when you hit 200 PSI. 200 PSI on a penetrometer will equate to about 25% air within your soil. You have to have air for the microbes. You have to have air to accompany nutrients to the plant and you have to have air to create water holding capacity. The air in your soil is crucial. It's kind of like breathing. You have to do it all the time. The deeper you can put this penetrometer, the better off you are. The high pressure front that is the inhalation portion of the meteorology world, that heavy sinking air of a high pressure front is designed to push air down deep into the soil. The microbes will take a big deep breath, they'll start partying and reproducing and doing their job. The oxygen can be pulled from the air and that will help accompany minerals to the plant. And 78% of this atmospheric air is nitrogen and it's free. The beautiful thing that the climatologists have told us is every breath of air we're taking has over 415 parts per million of CO2. This is where they're saying is the climate change. Carbon and oxygen are in excess in the atmospheric air, but they're in deficiency in the soil and in the plant. 200 PSI with your penetrometer, and the deeper you can get that 200 PSI is the deeper that high pressure front will push air down into the soil. After the high pressure front pushes air into the soil, a low pressure front which is light rising air helps the exhalation and the end of the respiration of the soil and that lifts and helps the CO2 come out of the ground that the microbes exhaled and then that gets sucked back into the leaf and you now have the carbon cycle going on and this is the way nature has been created many many years ago and has worked very very well but if you don't get air into the soil the cycle or the carbon cycle will not be complete. Compaction is one of the biggest limiting factors in agriculture today. So all of you fellas that have been looking at your soil tests and working on getting that soil test perfect, that's fantastic, it's awesome, it's, it's beautiful. But keep in mind those minerals only make up about 3% of the plant. The minerals in your soil that show up on your soil test are there to primarily structure the soil to create the environment. And then the microbes that have to have air will make your plant. This is the respiration portion of it. These tools aren't very expensive. They're easy to use. I figured it out. There's hope for everybody. And this was, is talking about the aerobic or the respiration part of your soil. Breathing is important. The other thing that's important is our heartbeat. A lot of times we don't think about it much unless it stops. And our heartbeat is electrical. And this electrical heartbeat can be measured in the doctor's office with, with an EKG or an ECG, an electrocardiogram. Well, we don't have an electrocardiogram for the soil, but we do have an EC meter. Inexpensive, easy to use, EC, electrical conductivity meter, basically checks the heartbeat 
of the soil. Almost every microbe within the soil will carry about a half of a millivolt of electricity. This will pick up on the microbial electricity. It'll measure nitrate nitrogen, ammoniated nitrogen, salt and sodium, whether they're inorganic or organic. It doesn't tell us where the electricity is coming from, but it will tell us how much electricity is in the soil. Nine times out of 10, this meter will tell us what the problem is, either too much electricity or not enough. Many times as we look at the soil, young plants, whether they're, they've just been planted or whether they're a perennial coming out of winter, coming out of dormancy, most plants like to start their life at about a 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or 0.5 on this EC meter the more consistent that number is as you push this down through the soil, the more biological and the more consistent, the more homogenized your environment is, that will invite the roots to go into that and they will enjoy that. You have microbes there, you have good electricity, you have created the environment that the roots enjoy. A 0.3, a 0 0.4, a 0 0.5 is the electricity that all plants need to start their life, whether they're coming out of a dormancy, whether it's a transplant, or whether it's a seed you've just put into the ground. On the U United States ground, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Asia, doesn't matter. These numbers are consistent all across the world. When you look at reproduction, that takes a little bit more energy. So when we started, we were at a 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Well, now you want to double or triple those numbers for reproduction. Reproduction is going to be a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, even 0 0.9. That's the electricity that needs to create seed, needs to hang and fill fruit, needs to fill and create the fruit that you're about to sell. The microbes will do this if your soil is healthy but this meter can give you a wonderful heads up on what's going on, what's happening, and what's about to possibly happen. Key point, many of your fungal, viral, and bacterial diseases enjoy a too rapid or too high of heartbeat or too low of heartbeat or electricity. What do I mean by that? If you're over a 0.9 on this meter, you're gonna have some ruckus, there will be some problems. If you're under a 0.2, pucker up, bad things are coming. Detrimental pathogenic disease causing fungus, algae and mold enjoys a low electrical value of the soil. So your plants may look good, but if you check the soil and you're under a 0.2, you better do something quick because hell may be coming and it will come in a hurry. So if you've never used an EC meter to check the heartbeat of your soil, or if you've never used a penetrometer to check the respiration of your soil, give us a call or email us at, at SoilWorks. This is what we do every day and it's what we've been doing for over 30 years. SoilWorks isn't just the name of our company, but it's our mission statement. We want and will get your soil to work.